Nothing like what people witnessed in the steamboat area south of Reno this month has happened since Mark Twain, a geyser spewing hot air 300 feet into the air. This natural phenomenon has captivated curiosity seekers and scientists alike, hoping to catch a glimpse of the most spectacular geyser activity recorded in the area since the 1800s. I've never been to Yellowstone, but for me, this is like a second time, said Rachel McCander, a geologic information specialist with the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology. In the 1800s, Steamboat was estimated to be the third largest geyser field in the United States. During the 20th century, most of its activity occurred underground, until recently, when mineral-rich air began seeping to the surface once again. However, in late September, the geyser resurfaced, spewing air from an abandoned geothermal well. The geyser has since subsided, but the area remains geothermally active, with several small pots bubbling nearby. Geologists actively studying the area frequently visit to observe, take air and rock samples, and compare temperatures with probes. Kerry Lindsay, a research geologist with the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology, said he wants to find the answer to the million dollar question, what causes the geysers? It could be a lot of things. There's a change in the water table in South Reno as the area transitions from agriculture to housing. The water table might be rising, Lindsay said. There might be a small micro earthquake that shakes one of those fluid channels. While the cause of the geysers' eruptions remains an open question, the cause of their receding may have something to do with Phil Busick, the landowner on which they are located. I have a neighbor here who has one in his backyard. He's a very smart guy, and he's been helping us out, Busick said. We spray the building with cold water straight from a garden hose. The Silver State has one of the highest geothermal activity regions in the US. Its location is perfect for such activity because it's close to two tectonic plates, which makes the Earth's crust relatively thin. In Western Nevada, the crust is quite thin, and magma is close enough to the surface that it can heat the surface air as it penetrates deep into the Earth through these cracks. Local nuclear physicist Taylor Wilson told us last year, Visitors to Yellowstone National Park have also been shocked by powerful hydrothermal explosions, the eruption of hot air underground that have sent steam, boiling air, mud, and grapefruit-sized rocks hundreds of feet into the air. There were no injuries, but the July 23 explosion in the Biscuit Basin area, just two miles north of the famous Old Faithful Geyser, damaged the boardwalk and surrounding hot springs. The National Park Service has temporarily closed Biscuit Basin while an assessment is carried out. While tourists flock to Yellowstone for its natural beauty, the park is also known for its geysers, earthquakes, and hydrothermal eruptions that demonstrate the power beneath its surface is a supervolcano. Part of this active volcanic region stretching across northern Nevada, Idaho, and Wyoming is the Yellowstone Plateau Volcanic Field, which includes a caldera. The Yellowstone caldera is what causes the geysers to erupt. The US Geological Survey has stated that geological activity in the park could be a sign of an impending disaster. The Biscuit Basin eruption is not an ongoing volcanic eruption. Most hydrothermal eruptions are small and unobserved, according to Michael Poland, a scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. According to the National Park Service, Yellowstone has more than 10,000 thermal areas, including hot springs, mud pools, and steam vents. The park is also a hotbed of seismic activity, with an average of 1,500 to 2,500 earthquakes per year. In 2023, there were 1,623 earthquakes, which is considered average. 
The largest earthquake reported last year was magnitude 3.7, according to the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. 